Ready? Is the planning board is going to come to order. It's December 5th at 6.36. And the chairman is a few minutes late. We're going to start without him and get, get moving. First on the agenda, may we have roll call, please. Dan Young. Present. <laughs> Becky Lipson. Present. Christina Enix. Present. Mark Seward. Present. Valerie Ritz. Present. Jenna Welton. Present. Kevin Cross has been excused. Don Porter might be on his way. And Chair Walker is on his way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, next item is action summaries. May I have a motion to approve the action summaries? Ms. Lipson moves and Valerie Ritz seconds. Is there any discussion? Is there any opposition to the motion? The action summaries are approved. Thank you. Next item is the minutes. I have a motion to approve the minutes for um, Wednesday, November 21st, 2018. Ms. Lipson and Ms. Ritz seconds. Is there any discussion or additions or corrections? Hearing and seeing none, these are approved. Special order of business um, disclosures. Are there any disclosures this evening? Ms. Lipson. Thank you. Through the chair, in case S12437, uh, my law firm represents petitioner's representative as a client in certain matters. I have uh, had no prior knowledge of this case and no involvement in um, dealings with petitioner's representative as a client. So. Um, um, and so I have. I uh, don't believe there's a financial motive and that I can be impartial in voting, so I would request to participate. Thank you. May I have a motion directing Ms. Lipson to participate, please? <laughs> Mr. Seward. I'm sorry. In case S12437, I suggest that Ms. Lipson participate. She has no financial or beneficial interest in this and can be impartial to the voting. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wilson seconds the motion. Are there, is there any discussion? Is there any opposition? Um, in that case, the motion is passed, and Ms. Lipson, you're directed to participate. And thank you. I have a second disclosure to make. If okay. <laughs> um, in case S12439, um, our firm also represents uh, petitioner as a client. I have had no involvement with this particular um, matter. Do not have a financial interest and believe I can be remain fair and impartial. I would also like to disclose that our firm works closely with petitioner's representative in other actions and again believe that I can be fair and impartial in my um, participation in this case and would request to participate. Thank you. May I have a positive motion directing Ms. Lipson to, to uh, participate? Mr. Seward and Ms. Wilson seconds. Um, sorry, um, too technical for me. In case S12439, I uh, propose that Ms. Lips can participate in the voting of this. She has no financial or beneficial interest, and this is her firm, and she's stated on the other projects. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is there any discussion? Any any opposition? The motion carries and Ms. Lipson, you're directed to participate. Let the records show that Chairman Walker has arrived. Do you want and I'm going to continue the chair for the night. Um, and are there any other disclosures? No other disclosures? Mr. Seward, did you have a disclosure? Uh, yes, in the uh, special items Oberg sub S12441. I'm the petitioner's representative in that case. Uh, any approval action, I will just abstain from voting. Thank you. Mr. Seward, would you clarify? We have, I don't see that on our, our docket for tonight. Uh, Oberg Sub S12441. It's under special order of business. Just an informational item that we would we'd be approving. That's, that's a short plat. We're not going to vote on that. Okay, thank you. Are there, do you have any other disclosures? Uh, none, thank you. Are there any other disclosures? Um, Mr. Porter has arrived. Mr. Porter, do you have any disclosures? I do not. Well, I will then. In the case of S12439, Overlook Estate Subdivision, addition to lots one and three, my firm has worked for the petitioner on other projects in the past. We are not involved with this project. We have also worked with the petitioner's representative on other projects. I have no financial or personal interest in the matters before the board. I can remain impartial in fact and action as a member of this board without personal bias. My past involvement and personal interests will not prevent me from fairly evaluating the facts of this case. May I have a positive motion directing me to participate? Mr. Walker moves. Ms. Lipson seconds. Mr. Walker, you speak to your motion. In please. case S12439, Overlook States Edition, I move that Dan Young be directed to participate in the matter. Thank you. Are there any discussion? Or uh, I would uh, be voting in support of that motion. I didn't hear anything that sounded like a uh, conflict of interest um, that you can deal impartially and that you don't have any financial interest in the outcome of the matter. Thank you. Any other discussion? Is there any opposition to the motion? Hearing and seeing none, the motion carries. I'm directed to participate. Next item is the informational items, the abbreviated plat. Is there any discussion or um, well, any discussion on the short plat? We don't have any consent agendas tonight. So we're moving on to new business. The procedure by which the public may speak to the planning board at its meeting is after the staff presentation is completed on public hearing items, the chair will ask for public testimony on the issue. Persons who wish to testify will follow the time limits established in the commission rules of procedures. Petitioners, including all of his, rep his or her representatives, have 10 minutes. Part of this time may be reserved for rebuttal. Representative of groups, community councils, PTAs, etc., have five minutes, and individuals are allotted three minutes. When your testimony is complete, you may be asked questions by the board. You may only testify once on any individual, on any issue, unless questioned by the board. Any individual may have appeal rights. 
relating to any action the planning board takes the appeal of this decision or any of the conditions is governed by AMC 21.11.304 the decision of the board at the scheduled public hearing shall become final seven calendar days after the date the decision is made on the record unless a written request is submitted to the planning division prior to expiration of the seventh day to prepare a written decision based upon the record made at the hearing and the request is accompanied by a written notice of intent to appeal. Adoption of the written decision by the planning board becomes the final appealable decision within 20 calendar days of the final appealable decision an interested party must file with the municipal clerk either a written motion alleging new evidence or changed circumstances per AMC 21.11.503 or an appeal of the board's final appealable decision per AMC 21.30 with that we will go to the first case open up the first case which is Case S12437, um, and that's Eastwood Terraces Subdivision, Tract A. May we have staff's presentation, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a request to vacate a 33-foot wide, 300-foot long public right-of-way easement on the southern boundary of the tract that was on the of the of the tract that was originally intended for roadway and public utility purposes. This 33-foot right-of-way easement is a state of Alaska right-of-way that originated in 1968, but then it did not appear on subsequent plats and grid maps. The 10-foot utility easement existing within the 33-foot right-of-way easement will remain on the final plat. No reviewing, no reviewing agencies had objections to the proposed vacation. 358 public hearing notices were mailed on October 24, 2018, but no public comments were received. Through a formal motion, the University Area Community Council voted not to oppose the vacation in question. There were 16 votes in favor of the motion, zero opposed, and six abstentions. Staff has determined that all six criteria for vacation have been met. The right-of-way easement has not been utilized in adjacent properties and therefore uh, cannot provide connectivity outside of the Eastwood Terrace subdivision, so it's a landlocked easement. The traffic department states in their comments that the development and orientation of surrounding subdivisions demonstrates that this section of RW right of way is in excess of municipal needs. In addition, this right of way easement is not part of the official streets and highways plan, and the existing street network already provides adequate access to all existing lots in the area. This vacation will not have any impact on traffic circulation and will not result in a realignment of any existing right of way. The planning department therefore recommends approval of the vacation subject to the condition in the staff report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? We will now open the public hearing or the hearing to the public. May we have the petitioner come forward, state your name, spell your last name for the record, please. Yes, my name is Dean Cars. The last name is K-A-R-C-Z. And Mr. Cars, would you like to reserve any time for rebuttal? Um, I'm thinking about nine and a half minutes. <laughs> okay, you may proceed. Uh, th thank you. Uh, um, I, my name is Dean Cars. I'm with PTS. We're the petitioner's representative, and um, we reviewed staff's uh, recommendations and write up and concur with all their recommendations and would request that the, uh, the board grant approval of this vacation. Thank you. Are there any, any questions of the petitioner? Thank you. You have nine minutes and 35 seconds for rebuttal. Thank you. Is there anyone from the audience wishing to testify tonight? You st um, state your name for the record and spell your last name, please. Krista Scott, S-C-O-T-T. -T. And I'm Zach Walker, W-A-L-K-E-R. And 
In reviewing the application, it listed a covenants, that there was covenants and a date for that, and so we looked up the covenants, and um, there's a section on resubdividing that there will not be any resubdivisions, and I'm wondering if that's been considered with this plat. I can read it if you want. Sure, go ahead. Um, for resubdivision, it says the area of lots here and described shall not be reduced in size by resubdivision, except that owners of three contiguous lots may divide the inner or middle lot, thus increasing the size of the two remaining lots, which shall then be treated for all purposes pertinent to these covenants as enlarged single lots. And I have not seen any updates to these. Um, and I, we live in the neighborhood, so so that's my largest, biggest question. I have two others, but um, you, you you still have two minutes. Uh, go ahead and finish. So okay, well, um, I'm going to come back to that. There's also on the blue sheet that we got in the mail. Um, so the utility easement, the 10-foot utility easement, the drainage one you mentioned, that's on the two lots for this parcel. On the application for the plat, there's also an easement on two additional parcels, and it's just not shown. So I think it should be shown. And I'm not sure it would have qualified for a short plat, but I don't know the answer to that. Um, what was my third issue? A question. He doesn't know. So other than that, then we just have a statement with this information unless someone has different information. Um, but we would object to vacate the right-of-way on the southern boundary of Tract A on Eastwood Terrace. Um, we also object to the platting board move forward uh, to issue the final plat um, for the application case number S12314. Um, as the existing covenants for Eastwood Terra subdivision, which includes this subject parcel, um, uh, under circumstances provided in the preliminary plan. So under the covenants for the subdivision, the following statement is uh, our reasoning recommending that the plat not be approved. I already read this statement, so I'm not going to read it again. Um, the owner doesn't have three contiguous lots, and based on the plans identified in the preliminary plat, no of the contiguous lots have been increased in size. And this is from ourselves and several neighbors, the neighbors of Eastwood Terrace. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Oh. Mr. Porter. Um, yes. Uh, I guess my first question would be, are you certain that the lot in question uh, that's being subdivided is part uh, and covered by the covenants? That's on the map for the neighborhood that I can share if you want. And I'd actually like to see the actual written words. My first comment is that rather, since it is a tract rather than a lot, the covenants do not apply okay. in my first reading of what I've just been seeing. Uh, we'll cover it more later. Does that follow the other actions that occur within this parcel? I don't know what the question is. The uh, restrictive covenants on this property are dated 1975. Is that correct? 
Yes. yes. How do I turn them off? So that was before the Horizontal Property Regimes Act? I don't know. Um, do you guys have a homeowners association in that area? No. And is there any common area that is still owned by the association, or is it just deed restrictions? I don't know. The property that we're looking at today is is the tract A on the plat map that you gave us. So it's the area that is yet to to be divided into different lots. So we're like uh, it's already been pointed out the um, in the case file restriction on. The Dividing is limited to lots and not to tracks themselves. The Do you mind if we go ahead and mark this as an exhibit? Or is this your only oh. copy? Oh, uh, that's fine. We have it online. Um, okay. I don't know the legal terms and only found this okay. a few hours ago, but in the case file it does I mean the original owner of that lot signed off on these covenants and their signatures there and it lists those covenants as applying to the lot thank you thanks mr. Seward a um, couple three questions is First, if you could maybe speak directly into the mic for me. I have a hard time hearing your soft voice. Um, where in vicinity to this subdivision do you live? I we are on 3800 Delwood Place. Say again? 3800 Delwood Place, which is lot one of Eastwood Terrace subdivision. It's a northwest corner. Okay. Um, the question that I see here is, is we are making a decision on the vacation of a 33 foot wide um, public right of way easement, not the subdivision of the lots. So we would like to request that the right of way is not approved. And the vacation is not approved. Until the matter is reviewed. I'm, I'm sorry. I, until the matter is reviewed, I would ask that you not approve it until the Are you objecting against the 33-foot right-of-way vacation? Is that your objection? Yes. Okay. And you're relating that to the covenants that you stated? Yes. It's not allowed. Because okay. the right-of-way is being vacated to for subdividing the lots. Okay, I understand. The, what's strictly before me is the vacation of a 33-foot, 300-foot public right-of-way easement and nothing else at this point. That's the that's decision that I think this board's making. But th thank you. I appreciate your appearance. No. Ms. Lipson. Thank you. Um, I'll echo the statements that Mr. Stewart just made in that um, what is directly before this board, while it can be frustrating to the public who might not have as much experience with this process, um, is simply the vacation of the right of way. Um, in, it appears that the initial subdivision was approved as part of a short plat in this case. I'm sure that staff is happy to talk to you after this hearing about the process. Um, I'll also mention that to the extent that there's a viable claim about the covenants, and there are a lot of real estate attorneys in this town, and you can go talk to them. Thank you. Thank you. We didn't have any, because it's a short plat, we didn't really have another platform to make a comment on this. Are there any other questions? Even though. Thank you very much. Thanks. And Mr. Walker, did you want to testify? No. And our, we can go now. Our community council is also meeting right now, so I don't need to talk anymore, right? That's correct. You've okay. t your time's up.
Is there anyone else from the public wishing to testify? Um, anyone at all? Would the petitioner's representative... Oh. Um, would the petitioner like to use any of the rebuttal time? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. No, just uh, echoing as uh, through the chair what Mr. Seward had said that um, this is a, a vacation hearing, and we'd uh, we again concur with staff's write up and, and would request approval of the vacation. Thank you. Sorry. Are there any questions for the petitioner, Ms. Lipson? I, um, I actually have a question for staff in this case, um, and petitioner might, and petitioner's representative might know. Um, this appears to be a U.S. patent that's um, the underlying basis for the easement, and I just haven't gone through this on the plotting board yet um, with this type of request. Um, is this, uh, I, has the U.S. government been involved in any of these communications or is it typically part of the plotting process that the uh, uh, good question so through the chair um, the state of Alaska Department of Natural Resources holds the um, the easement and so the condition of approval for this this spot or this sorry this um, vacation is obtaining approval from the state uh, prior to the removal of the easement great thank you Are there any other questions? Thank you. The public hearing portion is closed and the matter now rests with the board. May I have a positive motion? Mr. Walker is going to make that motion. I move to approve the vacation of the 33 foot right of way laid out in U.S. Patent Number 1139848, recorded May 7th, 1968, Book 364, page 352, subject to the condition listed on page 4 of staff's packet. Thank you. Mr. Porter seconds. Mr. Walker, would you address your motion, please? Yes, I find that the uh, standard for uh, vacation. Um, it's laid out in staff's packet on pages two through uh, four uh, are correct in that uh, in this case the uh, right-of-way is surplus to the current and future needs um, in that the entire neighborhood has been built out. This uh, specific property is landlocked um, and so there's not going to be any uh, opportunity for this roadway to for right of way to be used in the future to connect with other party parcels. Um, the <clears throat> vacation does not a address a street or right of way on the official street and highway plan. That the any right of way lying on the half uh, there is no I guess a half mile grid issued in this case, um, and. Uh, basically this area is excess. Uh, we did hear testimony today with respect to deed restrictions in the premises. Obviously the uh, vacation of the prim uh, part, the right-of-way in this case doesn't affect a subdivision of the tract into smaller lots um, and so the deed restrictions wouldn't come into play in any case. But in addition this is a uh, the deed restrictions that predate the Horizontal Property Regimes Act um, and the statute that may allow homeowners associations to have a uh, no subdivision prim uh, provision in it. Um, however, that would be only with respect to the original plan uh, for subdivision. And so it looks to me as though the proposed lots are in compliance with the likely original plan, but we don't have enough information at this point to make a ruling on, on, on that in any case. Um, so I don't find that it's an impediment to our taking action with respect to the right-of-way, and we'll be voting in favor of the motion. 
Thank you. Are there any um, additional comments or findings? Or is there any opposition to the motion? Hearing and seeing none, the motion passes. Next item on the agenda is case no S12439, Overlook Estates Edition number two, lots one through 13. May, may we have staff's presentation, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a request to subdivide one parcel of land into 13 lots. The petition site is located north of Eagle River Road and fronts Vantage Avenue and Eagle River. The subdivision request is being made to prepare the property for construction of 13 single family homes. The property was zoned as uh, CER 10, low density residential alpine district in 1984. The subdivision meets the minimum lot size and width requirements. There were no objections by the reviewing agencies to this planning action. The surrounding property is developed with single family residential homes or vacant land. The Eagle River Road right away is owned and maintained by Alaska Department of Transportation. Uh, Alaska Department of Transportation did not recommend any improvements will be required to Eagle River Road. Uh, so no conditions will be required for that improvement. Uh, the Vantage Avenue, the petitioner has been working with private development on the Vantage Avenue approach and anticipates receiving a letter from municipal engineer accepting the curvature and grades for the existing approach. Staff has made that uh, condition as well as a condition requesting uh, prior to final plat approval uh, submit a comprehensive site grading and drainage plan meeting the requirements of uh, project management and engineering department's policies. This preliminary plat appears to generally conform with the petition site's classification as shown on the 2006 Chuyaki River Comprehensive Plan and the land use plan map as well as goals and objective, objectives of housing residential development. Meeting goal 1A, the subdivision will create new residential development of single family homes in the Eagle River area. That will be located off of Vantage Avenue, which is a local road that connects to a major arterial. Uh, objective 2D, which is the development pattern, is consistent with other residential properties which border this site. This planning action appears to comply with the recommendations of the 2006 Chuyak E River Comprehensive Plan, goals and objectives. All lots in the subdivision will be provided access via publicly dedicated right of way. Additionally, reviewing agencies had no objections or comments to the proposed plat, and given the above information, staff is recommending approval of the planning action subject to the conditions A1 through six found on page nine and 10 of the staff packet, as well as the advisory comments uh, for access located on page 10, 11 of the staff application. The uh, petitioner, petitioner's representatives here and I can answer any questions you may have. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Mr. Porter. Yes, through the chair. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering if you could explain why it's in, uh, the uh, access uh, advisory comments are advisory uh, rather than a requirement. So the um, for the advisory comments for access to lots three and four and uh, access lots eight through 13 is through the state of Alaska. So that that's going to be uh, at the time of the land use permits. It's already going to be covered. It's just kind of a given um, that they're going to have to go uh, talk to them about their driveway permits. It's more captured under the building, and they didn't make it a recommendation for a plat note. They just they just said that during the uh, permitting process, the uh, applicant will have to come in to this for a, a driveway permit. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Maybe I'll follow that up, uh, uh, Mr. Porter, with also, we did have the, where they wanted it prohibited access, which is uh, number six, C, uh, C, D, E, and F. Those cover the where they are prohibiting access, which is separate from a driveway permit. Great, thank you. Any other questions of staff? We'll now open up the public 
um, portion of this hearing. May we have the petitioner's representative state your name, spell your last name, please. Hello, Chairman, members of the board. My name is Craig Bennett, B-E-N-N-E-T-T. -T. I'm with S4 Group, and I'm representing the petitioners. Um, also with me tonight is Triad Engineering, if there's any civil questions. And Mr. Bennett, would you like to reserve any time for rebuttal? Yes, please. How much time would um, you reserve? Probably nine minutes. This be quick. I agree with everything that Sean said. He uh, presented it well. We have no vacations, no variances, um, simple subdivision, and I recommend for approval. Thank you. You have nine minutes and 43 mm -hmm. seconds for rebuttal. Are there questions for the petitioner's representative? I don't see any or hear okay, any. Thank, thank you. you. Is there anyone from the public wishing to testify tonight? Anyone at all? I'll go with it. My name's uh, Ron Silva. We own a lot in Eagle or in uh, Overlook Estates. Will you spell your last name? Yeah, S-I-L-V-A. And don't ask me my lot number. I think it's three block one, but that's been a long time. Um, I'm just curious, this, this might not be the avenue for it, but is there a requirement to pave the driveways into these lots? Is that part of the platting process? Uh, no. Okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Hello, Mr. Chairman. My name is Russ Howell. I'm also a resident of Overlook Estates 1. I live at uh, 27438 Paramount Drive. It's the house on the hairpin turn of Paramount Drive, if you see the plat map there. And I have a couple of, um, uh, I guess, issues. Um, we are a small community. We have covenants for Overlook Estates 1. Overlook Estates 2 basically sort of um, is split by us. We're kind of in the middle and uh, we have a really nice community. It's, uh, it has uh, preserved its value uh, I think relatively well. Uh, I've been there for 29 years so over that time it's preserved its value quite well and our concern is that the new lots coming in uh, they have covenants that will also contribute to the quality of life that we enjoy out in Overlook Estates. Again I'm not sure this is the, v the venue for um, 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 making the case for uh, the new lots to be in to have some sort of covenants to cover um, their uh, construction and then also after the construction to cons uh, to cover um, things that people can do uh, their their covenants are not particularly onerous uh, they're focused in two areas one is uh, the number of outside animals that can ma be maintained and the desire here is to prevent people from coming in and putting in dog lots which happens in other areas in Alaska and then the second area is uh, to prevent uh, people from opening up um, de facto garages in their front yards and leaving derelict cars all over the place while they fix cars that they're trying to fix and we would hope that the, um, the folks who are um, putting together these um, uh, new lots will consider that. Um, a second area is um, we have a light that we in, that the community install had installed and we pay for every uh, month. It would be useful, I think, now that we have an additional uh, you know, 13 families that are going to be inhabiting the area. It would be nice if the municipality could take over the, the payment for the, the electricity used at that light. There are lots of other communities along Eagle River Road that have lights. It would be nice if we could um, enjoy that also. And the um, uh, other thing that we would like to see, there are no parks for kids. I mean, there's North Fork Park, which is opposite um, Overlook Estates, but there's no playgrounds or anything of that nature for, for kids who live along Eagle River Road. Uh, perhaps there might be a possibility of including um, a small area where um, uh, playground equipment could be installed because we have a growing number of small kids in the area. It would be nice not to have to cart them all the way into Eagle River so that they can play at a playground. And um, I would take issue with one thing that you guys have had the Department of Transportation look at the uh, curve that Overlook Estate sits on. I've been run off the road three times by cars coming around that curve as I'm trying to exit onto Eagle River Road. Um, 
I, I, I just, it's going to be doubly difficult for the, for the lots that are on the other side, on the uh, visitor center side of that curve. Uh, uh, cars going out to the uh, visitor center, uh, they go like a bat out of hell going down that road. And I think you're asking for a, a major accident unless careful attention is paid to how access to Eagle River Road is provided for those lots. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? We don't have any. Okay, thank you very much, thank sir. You. Appreciate it. So, did anyone else from the public wishing to testify tonight? I'm Alan Cannamore, C A N N A M O R E, and I too live in the Overlook Estates. Um, and I'm here just to get information on what's going to happen to our neighborhood. And I trust the platting process has gone through the due process to uh, approve this this platting action. However, um, I learned some information tonight from staff that uh, I've never heard of before. You say you accept everything except with a couple of um, considerations for A1 through 6 and some platting action. Is there a way to get a copy of that? So that's my first question. Uh, the other question addresses the... Uh, the plat itself does not address any access issues to these lots. We make the assumptions that lots that forward or, or face Vantage Avenue will will um, access off of Vantage, but in the Eagle River lots will uh, access off of Eagle River Road. But I've never seen anything given to uh, right of way off those roads or into the lots. So I just wondered if there's a if there's a uh, a plat that shows road access to these lots or alternative access or anything like that unless it's, my assumption is it's driveways right from the lot right to the fronting street um, but I shouldn't assume anything so that was my second question thank you are there any uh, questions Mr. Porter has a question for you uh, <laughs> since I started the can of worms with Sean um, I just wanted to point out that access to lots 4, 5, 6, and 7 from Eagle River Road shall be prohibited. So if you go to the map, you can see which lots those are referred to. Okay. Um, and then lots in 10, 9 and 10 shall share a single access onto Eagle River Road. The lots 11 and 12 shall share a, share a single access onto Eagle River Road. So, so they've laid that out. He's going to show that to you. Yeah. So th those are the restrictions that are going to be placed upon this plat uh, if we accept it as in kind. Okay. I uh, appreciate that. I don't have an access. I don't have the um, lot numbers on the plat. I don't think I do. Um, anyway, so I'll, I'll take a look at that. So, okay. Thank you for that information. Uh, so as of right now, there's no, there's no uh, plan to run access to the Eagle River Road lots through Vantage Avenue. Is that correct? Phoenix. The lots they plan to, to bring up Vantage. Mm -hmm. And these are the lots that they're going to put in the driveway. He's getting his answer right, right there. Okay. Looks like 45. So, did you have a chance to see the, the plat that shows um, 5, 6, and 7 will be accessing Vantage Road after they get approval or if they get approval? Yes. Okay. I did. Yeah, those three will be denied access to Eagle River Loop Road. Okay, uh, but the question, or maybe I'm misunderstanding here. The question is, will there be, uh, is there a plan to access the Eagle River Road lots? I don't have the lot numbers in front of me. I apologize for that. Um, Staff packet page 25 may help you. Thank you. The really small print. Yeah. It is. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at locks 8, 9, and 10. Okay. Eight, nine, and ten. Is there any plan at all to access those lots through Vantage Avenue? No. No. Okay. Thank you for answering my question. And um, Ms. Phoenix, did you have any other questions? What, did you get the 
<clears throat> what you were looking for with the staff um, department recommendations? I did. As if, I can, if, if this is a copy, I can take. Okay, yeah. It's on page nine. So if you read A, a through six, and, and additionally, they'll still have to go to the state for permits on the driveway. So the exact location will be determined there. Okay. Okay, well, this will be an uh, interesting reading, which is why I came tonight. So thank you very much. And typically, these um, these packets are at the front door, on as I'm pointing on my left hand side. But as you come in, there on the right hand side, there's a uh, shelves where these packets are. Okay, always learning. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? Anyone else from the public wishing to testify? Anyone at all? Would the petitioner's representative like to use your rebuttal time? Chairman, yes, so lots one through seven would be on Vantage. The driveway's on Vantage. Lots eight through 13 off of Eagle River Road. And we've already worked with DOT and agree with their proposed four driveways. One Lot 8 would have one driveway, 9 and 10 would share, 11 and 12 would share, and lot 13 would access on the far east side. Um, and we're happy with that. Uh, and um, that would be approved when we'd go in and talk to DOT for the driveway permits um, eventually. Thank you. And Ms. Lipson. Thank you. Um, one of the previous members of the public asked about a homeowners association, and that's not specifically before this uh, board, but to the extent that it's been considered, I believe that the public would like to know. So if you could speak to that. It's through the chair. There will be a homeowners association. Typically, we do that slightly before lots sell, so after the subdivision happens. And in the past, They've been ro robust um, and, I guess, um, very good quality. The same as Denali Estates just down the road. So it's going to be pretty close to that one. Thank you. <clears throat> and Mr. Porter. Um, yes, just uh, advisory question, I guess. Um, you spoke with DOT, and they uh, are combining the driveways for safety and sight distance sort of issues, I assume. that Could you? That is correct. Um, go ahead. I'll have uh, Triad, um, Grant with Triad, address that. So my name is Grant Matthews, M-A-T-H-E-W-S. Um, and yeah, we have a verbal approval from ADOT to uh, put the driveways onto Eagle River Road. Uh, they have very specific requirements for site distance and landing grades. Um, I know there was a gentleman who was concerned about the safety um, of access onto that road, but it'll be evaluated to make sure that we meet the state's requirements for those driveways. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Actually, and then just a final comment. If you could correct the, mis the spelling of contour lines in the lower left are 10 foot. It's C-O-N-T-U-R-E. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Walker. Uh, we had a question earlier on whether or not the driveways on the Eagle River Road would be paved. Yeah, through the chair. Uh, that's not a requirement of the plat, uh, but municipal code does require that the first 15 feet of the driveway is paved. Thank you. Are there any, any additional questions? I have, I have one. And so anybody else can think of them while I'm asking mine. On page 47 of our packet, there was a public comment regarding um, dangerous traffic and ice buildup. Would you address the record for us, please, on that? Uh, yeah, through the chair. Uh, we'll prepare a uh, grading and drainage plan to address any drainage uh, with the development of these lots. Uh, in terms of traffic, um, 
the Eagle River Road is classified as a major arterial, um, and that can have up to a capacity of 20,000 average daily trips. Uh, this development will only add approximately 125 average daily trips, so less than half a percent of the uh, capacity of that road. Thank you. So traffic is not going to be an issue? Correct. Are there any other questioners, questions for the petitioner's representative? Thank you very much. The uh, public hearing portion is now closed. The matter rests with the board. May I have a positive motion, please? Mr. Walker, would you make your motion? With case, respect to case S12439, Overlook Estates Subdivision, I move to approve the plat for 24 months subject to conditions one through six on pages nine and 10 of staff's packet. Thank you, Mr. Porter seconds. Mr. Walker, will you speak to your motion, please? I believe that the um, motion should be approved. The uh, department has addressed the issues uh, regarding access um, and with respect to potential improvements that may be required on the Vantage Avenue approach. Um, we have provisions in here regarding water and uh, the drainage way easements and the uh, limitations on access to Eagle River Road. We've also heard testimony that the uh, number of traffic visits that will be in, in increased by this improvement is only going to be about 150 in a day and that the road is capable of handling an excess of 20,000 daily uh, approaches. We've also heard testimony from three individuals. A couple of those were interested in covenants. Uh, covenants and whether they're in, uh, are not something that the municipality uh, makes a determination on. That's something that the private ownership of property winds up uh, placing or not placing. Uh, while the developer has stated that they have an interest in um, using covenants that are similar to someplace else in the area, uh, we don't have an ability to, to make them uh, either use them or other covenants. The um, And with that, I will be supporting the motion. Mr. Walker, um, would you clarify your motion to let us know if the advisory comments are part of your, your motion on page 10 and 11? Yeah, the advisory comments would be also included in the motion. Thank you. And Ms. Lipson. Um, I will also be voting in support of this um, motion. I would just add that um, the comment, public comments regarding parks and lighting um, are best addressed with the municipality and aren't directly in front of this board, but um, you now have a contact with the municipality who's aware of the case. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any any other comments or findings? Any additional findings? Um, is there any opposition to this motion? Hearing and seeing none, the motion passes. Thank you. Are there any um, persons to be heard tonight? No. Are there any reports, chair, secretary, committees? None. Are there any comments from the board members tonight? No. Oh, I will. Thank you. Okay. I will. Any individual 
may have appeal rights relating to any action the planning board takes. Appeal of this decision or any of the conditions is governed by AMC 21.11.304. The decision of the board at the scheduled public hearing shall become final seven calendar days after the date the decision is made on the record unless a written request is submitted in to the planning planning division prior to the expiration of the seventh day to prepare a written decision based upon the record made at the hearing and the request is accompanied by a written notice of intent to appeal. Adoption of the written decision by the planning board becomes the final appealable decision within 20 days of the final appealable decision. An interested party must file with the municipal clerk either a written notice or written motion alleging new evidence or changed circumstances per AMC 21.11.503 or an appeal of the board's final appealable decision per AMC 21.30. May I have a motion for adjournment? I move we adjourn. Um, the meeting is adjourned at Becky Lipson and Clayton Walker at 731. Thank you. <laughs>